If you are tuned in, however you're tuned in, social media, television, whatever you're watching us on, uh, welcome to Victory. We believe the Word of God will make positive impact in your life. If you will hear it and do it, God apply the Word of God to change everything. All right, so uh, yeah, go ahead and you can laugh at my green shirt. So it should have been last week. My wife is a week behind. I mean, that's no surprise. <clears throat> so we've been in a series. We've been talking about the sacrifice of Jesus. Uh, really righteousness leading up to Easter, which Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to be talking about uh, what was accomplished in his resurrection, how it affects you and your life, and uh, really we're kind of just leading up to that. So we're going to continue on today, and as always, you have to have ears to hear, uh, eyes to see, a heart to understand, and that, that is your attitude about, <clears throat> well, what does God's word say? Because a lot of us come from different backgrounds, different teaching, uh, some of it's taught, some of it's caught, but really what matters is what does the Bible say? Everybody say, what does the Bible say? Because that's what we believe, and that's what we apply, and that changes everything. So I'm going to pray. You guys open your heart, and let's get in agreement. Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the great helper and teacher. I ask that you would speak through my lips, <clears throat> put your thoughts in my mind, and help me to communicate the gospel freely. Lord, to strengthen your people, help me to speak as it were an oracle of God. And I thank you for giving us understanding, eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to understand, and then the grace to obey the word of God in our lives. And we'll give you praise and glory for all the fruit that's born in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, <coughs> amen. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, as always, uh, in this series, we've been starting in Romans 3. It's where we're gonna start now. And these are some amazing, I mean, to us, we've read it, we're Gentiles, it wasn't that big of a deal. Maybe when we read it, because we were never under the law, we never tried to get right with God by our deeds, uh, not in the degree that they did. But these were radical, radical statements that shook the world. I mean, it, it caused the Apostle Paul all kinds of grief and sorrow and beatings and stonings and because of the revelation that God had given him. And so these are radical statements. Romans 3, 21, now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested or revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So he's saying there's a way you can be in right standing with God without the law. Wow. The law was Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible or so. We finally get it into it. Exodus, he gives the Ten Commandments. Ten are famous. There are about 613 altogether. You can read through there. He talked about everything in the world on conduct, what you do, what you don't do. I mean, all kinds of things. And he says there's a way you can be in right and standing with God without the law. He says it's the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, because there's no difference. All of us have sinned. The Jew, the Gentile, the Hindu, the Muslim, the Buddhist, whatever religion there is in the world, all of us have sinned. You may be a little better of a sinner or a little less of a sinner in your eyes than somebody else, but all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But he makes this radical statement, we've been justified freely by God's grace through the redemption or the ransom or the rescue that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward or hath set forth, Amplified says, put forward to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So the Amplified says, whom God put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and propitiation, then it explains it by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation. So Jesus sacrificed, atoned for your sins, and reconciled us to God, it says, to be received through faith. Now, in the 26th verse, it talks about God's part in this. We saw it. It says, whom God put forth, the Amplified says, whom God put forth, the Amplified says, whom God put forward before the eyes of all. Well, what do you mean? God did something through Jesus Christ to make you and I in right standing with him. The, the 26th verse says, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, God's righteousness, that he might be just 
and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. Everybody say just and justifier. Now, just and justifier is exactly the same Greek root word as righteous and righteousness. Same word. So it says, whom God put forward to show that he is, that he might be just or righteous and the righteousness of him that believes in Jesus. Many translations say it like this. I just picked out the back here. It says, he wanted to show his righteousness to be righteous himself and make righteous anyone. So he put forward Jesus, what for? To show that he was righteous, that he didn't let sin go unpunished, that he, he did something about sin. He put forward Jesus Christ so he could demonstrate his righteousness, that the penalty of for sin was paid, the rebellion of Adam was paid. He wanted to show his righteousness to be righteous himself and make righteous anyone who? Anyone. Who believes in who? So according to this, anyone who believes in Jesus through the work of Jesus Christ, God put Jesus forward to make us righteous. And so what a radical statement, and you can imagine the religious people, because religion always wants to compare you with them, and they want to talk about how much better they are than you, and that's why you can keep reading, and it says, well, where's boasting then? It says it's banished. It's ruled out entirely because you don't get right with God by works. But yet, it's, it's crept into Christianity because of wrong teaching, and, and there's a lot of Christians that feel like they're right with God because of what they do and how much they pray, and I'm for prayer, how often they go to church. I'm certainly for going to church, but that don't make you righteous. That don't make you righteous. It may help your life, may bless your life, may shut the door to the devil in some areas, but righteousness is something God did through Jesus Christ to bring us into right standing with him. The word righteousness means to stand innocent, just, upright. Those are synonyms. Just, upright, and righteous all really mean the same thing. God is described as being righteous. In Psalms 11, verse 7, it says, For the Lord is absolutely righteous. What is he? Absolutely righteous. He loves righteousness, virtue, morality, justice. The upright shall see his face. Jesus is described as righteousness. And not only that, it says that his whole kingdom operates, his whole rule of authority operates on righteousness. It says in Hebrews 1 verse 8, thy throne, here's God talking about Jesus, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. That's the way he rules with righteousness. For us, Righteousness is the ability to stand before God without a sense of guilt, condemnation, unworthiness, because it's not based on our performance, but it's based on this gift that came to us through Jesus Christ. You can't earn righteousness and you can't grow in righteousness. The moment you accept Christ, righteousness is imparted to you as a gift, right standing with God. That way God can deal with you as a righteous child. He can bless you, help you, uh, instruct you, guide you, lead you, do all the things that belong to a righteous person, even though you're still just a babe. You don't attain to righteousness by living holy for 40 years, then all of a sudden you've grown and now you're righteous. No, you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of God, the Bible tells you to. You can grow in wisdom. You can grow in love. You can grow in faith. You can grow in better conduct, but you cannot grow in righteousness. You're as righteous as you're ever going to be now or through eternity. Are you here? Because righteousness is a gift and God gave it to you when you accepted Jesus Christ and you've been made now the righteousness of God. And that's exactly what Romans 5, 17 says. By one man's offense, talking about Adam and his sin, death reigned by one much more surely they which receive abundance of grace and the, what? Is that in your Bible? And the gift of righteousness. Everybody say gift of righteousness. 
So how do you get to be righteous? It's a gift, ain't it? A lot of people don't like that. They, they want to they wanna be able to point at somebody else and brag about how good. I'll tell you why God's blessing me. It's because, boy, I tell you what, man, I am something. Yeah, you're something, all right. You're self-righteous. No, righteousness is a gift. And it's received and given to you when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, if you receive the gift of righteousness, it affects your life. You'll reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So the reason this is so important is a lot of people don't even realize what sin is. I, I mean, we know that through the law is the knowledge of sin. That's Romans 3. It tells us that the law is to give us the knowledge of sin. But you know, James 2.10 says, if you keep the whole law and stumble in one point, now James was Jesus' half-brother. He said, if you keep the whole law, there's 10 famous commandments and about 613 all together. And let me just tell you something, you hadn't kept the whole law, you don't even know what it is. He said, if you keep the whole law and stumble in one point, you become guilty of breaking all of it. What? You may not have broke it as bad as that your next door neighbor or somebody else or the person sitting next to you. Just kind of look at them a little bit. You may not have broken that law as much as they have, but guess what? If you missed it in one point, and let me assure you, you have probably already today. It says you're guilty of breaking all of it. God don't grade on a curve. Are you here? And, and so if you, if you miss it in one point, you're guilty of breaking. That's why you can't earn righteousness because righteousness is perfection. It's sinless perfection. It's standing before God like you had never sinned. Well, none of us can do that. So that's why God had to put it on a gift basis through Jesus Christ. And he says, well, everybody receives Christ. I'm going to take his righteousness and give it to them, and I'm going to declare them righteous. And that's why this is only righteousness that counts. I'm in right standing with God because of what Jesus did and what God the Father declared when Jesus did it. Are you here? Galatians 2.21 says, I do not, here's what a lot of Christians do. Notice, here's Paul. He's writing to the church at Galatia. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead. I mean, if you could get right with God by you being good and keeping the law, why send Jesus? I mean, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. If there was another way you could be righteous, if you could sit in a monastery somewhere and hum and cross your legs... If you could light candles, if you could go on missionary trips, if you could do anything else to make yourself righteous, how unjust was he to Jesus? No, and, and it says, I don't frustrate the grace of God. A lot of Christians frustrate the grace of God. What does the word frustrate mean? Very interesting. You can look it up if you have a Greek concordance. If you don't have one, you can get one out of our bookstore. The word frustrate here means to set aside. What? They set aside the grace of God. They neutralize. They de-esteem the grace of God. They despise the grace of God. They reject or frustrate, and that's what that word means. They're saying, well, I'll just get it on my own, and that's exactly what the Jewish people tried to do. And that's why Paul wrote to them and says, my heart's, I, I break for Israel. My fellow, my fellow countrymen, I break my heart breaks for them because they're going about to establish their own righteousness and they haven't submitted to the righteousness of God. You can't establish your own righteousness. I don't care how hard you try, you'll fall short. And you better put your faith in Jesus and his atoning sacrifice. So thank God for 2 Corinthians 5, 21. You know what it says? For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. Jesus who knew no sin. Why did he do that? Why did he bear your sin? There was a reason. 
He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin so we could be made something. The righteousness of God through him. Thank God for Jesus. Everybody say, thank God for Jesus. Everybody say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you made Jesus Christ to be a sin sacrifice for me. Jesus, who never did sin, so I could be made the righteousness of God in right standing with you because of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord some praise for that. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you here three. I think last time I spoke, I gave you three. I'm going to give you three more uh, benefits of being righteous. You know, a lot of Christians just think, well, I just get to go to heaven in the sweet by and by. Well, I mean, if, if that's all there was, that'd be wonderful, but that's not, all, that's not all there is. Righteousness is an amazing gift that God gave you that adjusts and changes everything about life and how you can deal with God and how you receive from God. There are all kinds of blessings and benefits that are promised to the righteous. And most Christians, they don't know and they don't claim them. Well, I mean, if you don't know, you can't take advantage of it. So I'm just going to give you three today. The first one is this. Righteousness, our right standing with God, opens the door to effective prayer. I mean, it'll make your prayers effective. Psalms 34 verse 15 says it this way. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Verse 17 says the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of half of their troubles. How many troubles? The Lord delivers them out of one out of ten of their problems. The Lord delivers them every once in a while if he feeleth like it. Is that what it says? Well, the righteous don't believe that. And most of them aren't, aren't calling on the Lord and crying to the Lord with a righteous cry. They're in there reminding him about how unworthy they are, accusing him of being the problem. A lot of Christians think God's the one causing the problem in the first place because he's in control of everything. That is so stupid. Has God controlled everything you ever did? Has he? Don't make me come down there. <laughs> no, he ain't controlled everything you ever did, and he ain't controlled everything anybody else has ever did. He gives you a free choice to choose life. But a lot of Christians, I mean, when they're trying, they're whining, complaining, accusing God of being the problem, talking about how unworthy they are, how bad it looks, and they think they're praying about it, and then they destroy their own faith and confidence that God hears them and wonder why nothing ever happens. That's not how you go to God. You forget about you. Who are you anyway? Yeah, I know you're a blood-bought child of God, but there's somebody who's got a standing in heaven, and he gave you the right to use his name. And you better forget about you and you go to God and say, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care how I feel about it. You said I am the righteousness of God by his blood sacrifice. You said you'd hear my prayers. And I've been in the process of learning how to do that for 45 years. And I had to start out, you know, I thought that prayer was like hitting the slot machine. You just pray and every once in a while you hit it. That ain't the way it works. Jesus said, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it and you will get it. He didn't say pray and it's like hitting the slot machine. So I started out on, well, I started, I prayed for a car first, never did get it. May go by yet. But I, because I didn't know how it worked. I knew he said, whatever you desire, but I didn't know there was time involved with answers, and I didn't know how to stand my ground. But then I prayed for four tires. Bill and I lived in Grand Prairie on Main Street there. We lived in some government apartments. And um, I just got a new job. I had a 1970 Ford Galaxy 500. And uh, man, my tires were slick. 
They were still belted, right? You ever wore your tires out till the steel belts were sticking out? Steel belts were sticking out of my tire. I mean, you couldn't run your hand around the side of the tire and the steel belts would cut your hand. Well, I, I worked at a job. You couldn't be late. You were waiting to take somebody's place. You were late three times. You're gone. And man, I, I went out and looked at my car and I thought, oh my gosh. Man, if I have a flat, man, I mean, these steel belts are sticking out. No way it's going to pass inspection. So I prayed. I'd found out about this praying over there the way Jesus said, believe you receive it. So I prayed for these four tires. I, I looked to see what size they were. I said, Lord, I need four 15-inch uh, steel belted radial tires that'll fit on this car. And I'm asking you for them in the name of Jesus. I'm not praying in my name. Jesus said, when you ask, believe you receive it and you'll have it. And I believe I got four steel belted radial tires for this car. Went in the house. Next morning, got up to go to work, went out there, and lo and behold, steel belted radials. There's just this steel still sticking out, tires just slick as they ever were. <laughs> Nothing changed. So the devil's telling me in my mind, these thoughts come, you can't pray and get, you can't get physical stuff. That's talking about spiritual things. Whatever you desire spiritually, it'll be given to you. I just said out loud, well, that's what he ought to have said then. He didn't say it. <laughs> if that's what he meant, he ought to have said what he meant. Everybody say, say what you mean. <laughs> I kind of do that, don't I? Well, so does God. So I didn't pay any attention to it. I just said, thank God I got four new or almost new, real good steel belted radial tires on this car. Thank you, Father. Well, that went on for two weeks. And every time I'd come out of work and get in my car, I'm thinking, praise the Lord for my tires. I'd get up in the morning and go, praise the Lord for my new steel belt radio tires. Thank you, Father. And Jesus. That went on for two weeks. All the time, that was working on me. You can't do that. Don't work that. Well, you can't have that. Well, on Saturday morning then, about two weeks later, I got up. I'm standing out on the front porch. A man drives up my pickup. Gets out, got a brand new pickup. He said, I just bought this new pickup. I said, man, that's a good-looking good pickup. I like that. He said, but before I bought it, I had an older pickup, and I just put four new tires on it. And I didn't want to trade my old pickup in with new tires. So I took my new tires off, and I went down and put four old cheap tires on it and traded it in. And I got four Still belted radial tires out in the back of my pickup, size 15. Uh, do you need any tires? <laughs> he said, they're size 15. If they'll fit your car, you can have them. So I went and looked, size 15, fit right on my car, and I got them, and I learned. Everybody say, we need to learn. Need to learn. Yeah, you go to God as a righteous man. You believe you receive it when you pray. Because righteousness opens the door to effectual prayer. James 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Amplified says, The prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Second thing is this, righteousness gives you wisdom, or God promises wisdom and guidance for the righteous. Proverbs 2, 7 says, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler, which means a shield to them that walk uprightly. Proverbs 15, 19, the way of the slothful man is a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made what? You know, God wants to give you wisdom. You can read through the book of Proverbs. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. You can read Proverbs 3 and it tells about all the great benefits of having wisdom and God wants you to have wisdom. And he says he'll give, he's laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. In fact, in James chapter 1, he says, if any man lack wisdom. Well, and sometimes in life we all do. We don't know what to do about this situation. We don't know how to turn that around. There'll be times in business I mean, God can give you wisdom, one idea. I mean, that'll open up a whole new area of blessing 
an endeavor, an achievement. God wants to give you wisdom. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraids not, and it'll be given him under certain circumstances. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, can't go back and forth. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. You don't get anything from God by one minute you believe, the next minute you don't believe, you're going back and forth. No, you got to believe you got it. Wisdom. There's a scripture here, Proverbs 10, 31. Very interesting. I was thinking about this. And I saw this has more than one meaning. Proverbs 10, 31 says, The mouth of the just brings forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. Now, just, you know, there's a law of double reference in the Bible. Don't have time to teach about that. The mouth of the just brings forth wisdom. That means just or righteous people, they should be speaking wisdom. They should know the scripture. And that's the plain uh, interpretation of what it's talking about. But I think there's more revelation here. The mouth of the just brings forth wisdom. You know, there's things coming out of your mouth that can bring forth wisdom. Do you know all the wisdom of God is on the inside of you? Did you know that? Colossians 2 verse 3 says, All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ. Well, where is Christ? Is he in you? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ, and the mouth of the righteous or the just brings it forth. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean most Christians, if they pray for wisdom, which most of them don't, but if they do, they, they, it's like they slam the lid on it because they say, I don't know what to do. I never know what to do. I never make good decisions. Everything I do is not right. I don't understand this. They're always talking that way. I... My gosh, man, what a terrible thing this is. I don't know what to do. If something don't happen, we're going to go broke. And 15 times a day or 15 times a week, they're talking about, I don't know what to do. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what to do with those kids. I don't know what to do about this financial problem. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know what to do. Well, well, your mouth then is not bringing forth wisdom. You need to start saying... No, I prayed for wisdom. I have the wisdom of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I know what to do in every circumstance and situation. The wisdom of God's in me because God's in me. He said he laid up sound wisdom for me. So the Lord's illuminating me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. And a person who starts talking that way, they'll bring forth wisdom. And you may just get up one morning and all of a sudden you got an idea. Or you're on your way to work. Or you're driving somewhere and all of a sudden you'll get some impression about doing something and you're thinking, well, I don't know why the Lord wants me to do that. And you'll do it. It'll end up being the wisdom of God and open up a whole new avenue of blessing in your life. The mouth of the just brings forth wisdom. Everybody say, the mouth of the just brings forth wisdom. So I use my mouth the right way. My words the right way to bring forth wisdom. I always know what to do. I always make good decisions. The Lord is leading me. The Lord's guiding me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord some praise for that. That's good. All right, last thing is this. God promises to bless the righteous. We looked at this one scripture, but he said, Psalms 5, 12, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Who's he going to bless? How many of you in here are righteous? If you're not, you can't be before the service is over. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Who the Lord says he's going to bless? Is that true or is that not true? And you're righteous. What did he say he's going to do for you? Well, I mean, that's what he said, not, not me. I'm just reading it. 
Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass him as with the shield. Well, what does the blessing of the Lord do? Proverbs 10, 22, what, one thing, what does it do? The blessing, who's he going to bless? The blessing of the Lord it maketh, and he adds no sorrow with it. What? The blessing of the Lord it maketh the rich, and he adds no sorrow with it? Who's he going to bless? How many righteous believe that? Oh, not me, brother. I just want a cabin over in the corner of glory land. Well, why don't you quit being so self-centered? Why don't you believe to be blessed so you can be blessed yourself and then you can bless all kind of people around you and employ them and give them jobs and help them and promote them and meet their needs. So you can be a light in a dark world and they can say, man, who is your God? Psalms 112, last scripture, verse 1. Praise the Lord, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. What's the next verse? Wealth and riches shall be in his neighbor's house. Where's it going to be? Oh my gosh. A televangelist went back in time and changed that. <laughs> Wealth and riches will be in his house. Oh my gosh. Is that in the Bible? The devil has deceived a whole generation of church people for, for decades, hundreds of years actually, because he wants you to be broke and poor and depressed and not able to help anybody. But God said he's going to bless the righteous. Wealth and riches will be in his house. His righteousness endures forever. Well, he said he'd bless you. So these are, these are things righteousness provides for you in your life. But you've got to believe for them. It's not just going to fall on your head like a ripe cherry off a tree. What do you believe? Hebrews says the word preached didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Are you mixing faith with what you hear? I said, are you mixing faith with what you hear? Or you got a shield up? Are you mixing faith with what you hear? Who did he say he's going to bless? Are you righteous? Then you can stand on his word. Sometimes I put my Bible in the floor just to make a point. Nobody around, me and God, few angels, Maybe a demon or two watching in the distance. <laughs> Just say, I'm standing on this. This is the word of God. And here's what the word of God says. And I'm not stepping off of it. Amen. Come hell or high water. He said he'd bless the righteous. And I'm righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I am blessed. Don't care if I feel like it or look like it. I am blessed to the Lord. Amen. Can I get an Amen. amen. And I tell you what, you start, you start getting an attitude. You got to get an attitude with the devil. You got to run him off. You got to let him know, buddy, I don't back down. Everybody say, I don't back down to the devil for nothing. Amen? Because the Lord's going to bless you. You're righteous. Amen? Praise God. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. God is so good. God loves you. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here and you don't know God, you need to get everything right with him. I'm not talking about playing religion if you've never been born again. Because the scripture says, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. You may think you're young, you got the world by the tail. Let me tell you something. 70,000 die every day. 70,000 leave the planet every day and go into eternity. And they're all not old. What is your life? 
It's a vapor. It appears for a little while. Vanishes away. But there is another life. There is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And he will take you into his eternal kingdom if you will put your faith in him. And if you're here today, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about joining church. What about Jesus Christ? You will stand before his throne. You will stand, ever knee will bow, voluntarily or involuntarily, to the Lord. And you get a chance to do it now. That's what this life is about. He's going to give you about 70, maybe 80 years, maybe a little longer, to make your choice. Who are you going to serve? And God loves you. And if you have never accepted Jesus Christ, I beseech you in the name of Jesus to get your life right with him. He loves you. He wants you to come into his kingdom. He died to save you. But do not neglect the salvation that is offered to you because someday that invitation will be gone. But today you can choose. Bow your heads with me just a minute. If you're not right with God, if you're watching on TV and you're not right with God and you want to get your life right with him, listen to me. This life will come to an end, but there is another kingdom. There is another dimension, not part of this material realm that we will go into. And you want to go into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if today you say, I choose Jesus, I make him the Lord of my life as an act of my free will. I make my choice for Jesus Christ. Either you're not right with God and you want to get right, or you're not sure that you've ever been born into his kingdom. You've never confessed with your mouth out loud him as your Lord. That's what you got to do to be saved. He said if you would do that, he'd save you. So we're going to give you an opportunity. If you're here today, we're all going to pray the prayer out loud for you, but you need to show some kind of faith. So I'm asking you, if you're not right with God and you want to get right, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about Jesus Christ in your eternity. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you're saying, I make that decision. One, two, three, shoot it up in here, hands anywhere. I see that hand right there, young lady. This young man back here, I see that hand, thank you. I see that hand back there, sir, thank you. I see that hand over here, sir, thank you. It's your choice. Choose life. Anybody else that'll join these four? Yes, sir, I saw that hand. Thank you. I tell you what, the Bible says all heaven's watching. The recorders from heaven are here to watch. Is there anybody else? I make that choice. If you're watching online, you can choose Jesus Christ. We're all going to pray this prayer. Those four of you that I saw that raised your hand, I see a hand back at the back. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Those five of you that raised your hand, be sure you say this out loud with your mouth. We're all going to pray it. You pray it, and your eternal destiny will change. Everybody say, God in heaven. Today, I've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I believe in my heart. He died for my sins. He rose from the dead to make me right with you to give me righteousness, and I thank you for it. Today, I choose Jesus. Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life, and I make you the Lord, ruler, and master of my life and my family and all that pertains to me. I believe in you. I call on you. Thank you for saving me now. I'm now your child and I give you praise for what you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord some praise for that. Thank you, guys. If you prayed that prayer, we have some books up here and a Bible we'll give you for free. If you prayed it and you're watching online, if you'll let us know, we'll send the material to you free of charge. Thank you, guys, for tuning in. All right, are you ready? Are you righteous? All right, let's make our own confession of faith. Everybody say it out loud. I mean, say it where you can hear it. By the blood of Jesus Christ, God has declared 
me righteous. Therefore, I am blessed of the Lord, spirit, soul, body, family, finances, in every good way. I am righteous, and the righteous will flourish in life, in health, in spirit, and in soul. I am flourishing by the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you. Jesus loves you.